What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 woodworking tutorial for you. So in the first video we kind of got familiar with the workspace and other things like that and now we're going to go through and I'm going to teach you how to create a simple example model using the tools inside of Fusion 360. So we're going to use this to learn how to use the sketch tool as well as how to extrude different shelves and put everything together into its, into its own complete model. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in order to create our bookcase, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to model out the different parts and pieces that make it up. And so we're going to start by creating our side pieces that make up the supports that are used inside of our bookcase. So to do that, we're going to start off by creating a sketch. If you remember, in Fusion 360, you use a sketch in order to rough out a shape before you extrude it into 3D. And so we're going to click on this plane right here, the plane between the green and the red axis so we get a straight up and down view. And so now what we want to do is we want to draw this out to a length or we want to draw the profile of one of our side pieces. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing either a line or a rectangle depending on how you want to do this. It doesn't really matter. So if we were to draw a line we could just click on the line button and then mouse over our center point right here and single click. And then you can see how we can move our mouse and this is automatically inferencing to the different points um, in my grid. So right now my grid, for example, is inferencing to every half inch. And so if this wasn't, if you wanted a value that wasn't on your grid, you could also type in a value. So in this case, for example, I want this to be 12 and a half inches thick. So I'm just gonna type in 12.5 and hit the enter key. And so now what we need to do is we need to um, close this in. And so in order to do that, we need to finish drawing this profile. And you're gonna notice right now that my mouse isn't inferencing to that three quarters of an inch point. So this is where typing in that value can be really helpful. And remember that you can either type in 0.75 or also three quarters and hit the enter key in order to draw this line. And then I'm just gonna draw another line down the same length then I'm gonna close this in. And so what you're gonna notice when you do this is when you do this, this is gonna give you this little shaded area. So this is basically indicating to you that you've closed this in and now there's a face inside of this perimeter. Well, that's good because we're gonna extrude this up. So to do that, we're gonna click on finish sketch and that's gonna take us back into solid editing mode. Well now, we can use the extrude tool inside of solid editing mode to extrude this up. And notice that since I had this selected, this uh, automatically tells me or gives me this little arrow right here and also this value right here um, that I can adjust for how far we wanna extrude this. If you click on the extrude tool and this isn't letting you move this up, um, just uh, make sure that the select button is selected and then click on this right here. And then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in a value. So for this value, we're gonna say that this is gonna be, we'll call it 55 inches high. So what this has allowed us to do is this has now allowed us to basically extrude this side panel. So now we have this side panel inside of Fusion 360. And this has been created as a body. So if you were to go over into your browser and click this drop down, you can see how this is now called body one. And if you wanted to, you could label this as we go. So for example, I could just uh, click on this name and I could call this something like side panel. 55 inches high or something like that. And so now there's a couple different ways that you can proceed depending on how you want to do this. So you could either model the top piece across here, you could copy this across, or you could start modeling your shelves. And so what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna model out my bottom piece. But there's something about that that we need to kind of um, we need to kind of figure out. And the thing with that is for this particular bookcase, this is gonna be up off the ground, maybe like six inches or something like that because you're gonna have like a little cap piece around the front. And so what we wanna do is we wanna draw a sketch in here, but we wanna draw it six inches off the ground. And so probably the easiest way to do this is to add a construction plane or an offset plane. So an offset plane in this case would be us marking the location where we wanna draw our bottom shelf piece. So in this situation, for example, we would do a construct offset plane. And what we wanna do is we wanna start 
with this base piece because that's where the base of our bookcase was. And we just want to click on that. And then you're going to notice that you've got this little arrow where you can move this up and down. And so in this case, I want to type in a value of six inches and hit the enter key. And so what that's done is that's given me a plane six inches offset from the plane that we selected. So it's given me a plane six inches above the ground plane. And even six inches may be a little bit high. I may want that to be more like, uh, we'll call it maybe four inches. So I'll just add another offset plane. I'll just type in a value of four and hit the enter key. And so now we can rough out our base shelf piece. So to do that, we're going to click on the Create Sketch button. And notice how before we had these three options for the three axes. Well, now you can also click on this new plane that we just created. So if I click on this plane, now I can come in here and draw. And anything I draw is going to be um, three or four inches off the ground, depending on what value I typed in there. So now I can just draw my line in order to make up the outline of my shelf. So we're gonna say this shelf is gonna be about 29 inches wide. We'll draw a line here and a line here. And then this is filled in and we can now extrude it. So when we click on finish sketch, now our sketch is gonna be in here and we can extrude this up. And notice that our sketch was created on that plane which is up off the ground. And so what we wanna do is we wanna extrude this to a thickness of three quarters of an inch. So if I click and drag this up, you can see how this is too thick, so instead I want to type in three quarters. And once you type something in right here, you don't have to just hit the enter key, you can also hit the tab key to tab out of that so that you can um, move this around. One thing you're going to notice is what this has done is this has automatically joined the side piece with your uh, shelf piece. And we don't necessarily want that because that's going to basically combine the shelf piece with my side panel. And I don't want that. So what I want to do is I want to change the operation to new body instead of to join because we want these to be in here as individual parts and pieces so that we can look at them later. So you can see how the difference is if I turn join on there's no line separating these two. If I click on new body then this is created as a completely separate body from this other piece right here. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on OK. And now you can see how we've got a base shelf piece and we've got a side panel piece. We can come in here and rename this as well. So we can just call this shelf for right now and hit the enter key. So you can kind of manage all of the different pieces in here by renaming them over here in your browser. And so now what I want to do is I want to make a copy of this side panel. So this side panel is what's making up the structural support of my bookcase. Well, I want to make a copy of that so I have one of these on each side. So there's a few different ways you could do this. You could use the rectangular pattern tool, or you could also just use the move or copy tool. So the move tool actually allows you to create copies of objects inside of Fusion 360. So the way that that works is we can just activate that tool, and we want to make sure that our move object is bodies. And this is the other reason it was important to not join our shelf with this is because we don't want our shelf to be copied when we do this. We only want this side panel to be copied. So I'm going to go ahead and click on selection and I'm going to select and I'm just going to click on this side panel. So when I click on this side panel, you're going to notice that this gives you options for different angles and distances that you can adjust this in here. Well, what we want is we want to make sure before we move anything around that we check this box for create copy. And so what that means is that means that now when we move this like this, we're creating a copy of this object instead of using the original. And in this situation, this is going to be 29, it's going to be 29 and 3 quarters of an inch across here to make sure this is flush because you've got to move it based on this corner point. So you've got 3 quarters of an inch of a side support and 29 inches of a shelf. So we just want to type in a value of 29.75 and hit the enter key. So now, we have our two side panels in here and we have our shelf in here. And so now we need to model out the top part of our shelf. So, and like I said, for this one, what we're gonna do is we're going to use the rectangle sketch tool in order to do that. So to do that, we wanna create a sketch. And in this case, instead of finding a plane, 
we already have a plane which is the top of the shelf and so we want to draw this sketch on the top of this shelf so we're just going to click on this face and what that's going to do is that's going to orient our view straight up and down and then you can use the rectangle tool either by clicking on this or by tapping the R key and then single clicking here moving your mouse across and single clicking here and then we can click finish sketch and if we rotate out of this, you can see how this created our sketch on top of our bookshelf. And so now we can extrude this. And so now we can extrude this using the extrude tool. And one thing to notice about this is you need to make sure you pick up both of these faces when you do this. You can see how, for whatever reason, this split this right here. So we just want to make sure that we pick up both of those in our selection. So when we activate the extrude tool, when we select our profile, just make sure you click on this face and this face because we want to extrude them both and when I click and drag this up you can see how again this automatically goes to a join operation we want to make sure this is set as a new body and we want to set our distance to be 0.75 or 3 quarters of an inch and I'm going to hit and I'm going to hit the enter key to create that so now we've got our top shelf piece and we could go ahead and name this so we could call this um, shelf top and maybe put the dimensions in there so I think it's 12 inches deep and it's 30 and a half inches wide so we do 30.5 inches wide by 12 inches and so now there's a couple different ways that we could copy the shelf up depending on how you want to do this so in this case let's go ahead and let's use the rectangular pattern tool in order to create equally spaced shelving um, so what we want to do, because we need to create multiple different copies of this, the rectangular pattern tool is a great tool for that because it lets us create multiple different copies. So we're going to, or we're going to click on the button for rectangular pattern and then we need to select this body right here so that we can copy it. So in this situation, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select my shelf body. And then I'm also going to select a direction because what this wants is this wants to create an array or multiple different copies in a certain direction. So in this case, we're going to click on select and then we're just going to click on this line making up the front corner of the shelf. And that's going to tell this that we want to make a copy of this along that direction. So you can see how what this does is this now allows us to create multiple different copies either based on an extent so if I wanted this to be based on an extent, we could do that, or we could also do it based on a spacing. So if I wanted to take this and say that we were gonna create multiple copies every 12 inches or something like that, we could type in negative 12, and then we could just create multiple different copies, and those are all gonna be 12 inch copies. And so really what I wanna do, because I wanna make sure these are equally spaced, is I wanna create this last copy at the very top of my shelf, so in this case, that looks like it's going to be about negative 51 inches. So I'm going to type in negative 51. And then now I'm able to create equally spaced copies from this point to the top point right here. And you can see how by adjusting this value right here, I can set the number of shelves that are going to be in here. So in this situation, let's say that I wanted there to be, we'll say five shelves total. I could use this tool in order to do that. And one thing you may want to do is make sure the suppress option is checked. And then you can come in here and you can check the box to toggle these different copies. So we can set this so that we don't create this very top copy because there's really no point to that. We don't need it um, because we already have a top piece on top of this. So now if I was to click OK, you can see how I have a shelf in here and I've got my various shelving pieces in here at an equally spaced spacing. And so now let's add a back panel to this bookshelf. So let's say that this bookshelf is gonna have something on the back so that it uh, isn't just see-through here. Well, all we would have to do to do that is just draw another sketch on the back side, and we'll just align it with one of these faces. And we can just use the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle across this whole back piece and click finish sketch. Now if I go home and I orbit around, you can give that a little bit of thickness. So, and that's not gonna be very thick depending on what you put back there. So we can just extrude this and we can extrude it to like an eighth of an inch or something like that. So we'll call it an eighth of an inch for right now. And remember, we need to make sure 
in our selection that both of these planes get picked up, we also need to make sure that this gets created as a new body. And then we're going to click OK. So now we've got a back panel on our bookshelf. And so a lot of shelves have a little kick plate on this front face, so or that run across this front face. So let's go ahead and add a kick plate in here. So in order to add a kick plate or a bottom piece, depending on what it's there for, um, we can just use the create sketch function. And we can go ahead and we can tell this we want to create a sketch on the inside of this piece. So now let's say this is going to be recessed maybe an inch or maybe like half an inch. So all I would do is just draw a little line half an inch off of here. Then we could draw our little kick plate piece and notice that you can rotate around if you want to. So you don't have to be in this straight on 2D view to create a sketch. So let's say that we were to draw a line up here. We'll draw another line that's gonna be three quarters of an inch. And then we'll close it off and finish our sketch. And then we'll just extrude that across to this face. And so one of the cool things about the extrude function is not only can you do this by distance, so we could just drag this over here until we find um, the point that we need, or we could do the math to figure this out, or you could also set your extent to be two object. So, and when we set our extent to be two object, we can just click on this face and this will extrude that to that extent. So it'll find the point at which this face intersects with this one and it'll extrude it that far. And then all we have to do is click on new body and click on okay. And so what that does is that gets brought in as your kick plate. So we can just call this kick plate We could call this back panel. So now we have a full bookshelf in here with all the different parts and pieces with this very simple workflow. So you can take this and you can apply this to other kinds of creation as well. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you had any questions, if there was anything that I missed in here. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. It, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.